Hello, this is Dorothy Smith. I'm a Close to My Heart Independent Consultant, and today I'm going to show you the Hawthorne card making kit from the new catalog. And this is on page 22 and 23 of um, our new seasonal catalog. So it uses um, saffron charcoal, and this is a new color, paprika. Um, so there are, we got, I think, eight new colors evergreen, wisteria, green apple. See, I haven't even opened them. Julep. There's two juleps, a regular water base and a dye. Um, sangria and lemonade. And so those are all of our new colors. And I'm going to be using paprika as one of the new colors. And so this kit comes with the instructions. And it comes with um, a die cut and a stamp set, which I love. Now this paper, that's the background and texture paper that comes with the kit. You get two pieces of that. You get, uh, this is for 15 cards, so you get the cards in the envelopes, and you get some min, uh, mink twine. And I went ahead and cut all of the pieces. The cuts are, are very easy, and this um, stamp set is just, oh, so fall. And look at that. You would not want to cut that out by hand. So having um, all of the main pieces as um, die cuts is perfect. So I'm just trying to figure out which block I'm going to use, and I'm going to use my big four inch block uh, to do the stamping with that. And so look at how pretty. I love that. Um, anyway, and it's very easy to match up. Sometimes dies and stamps are not easy to match up. That's the zip strip that came off of the background and texture. And there's all my pieces of cardstock. So it comes with um, charcoal cardstock and paprika cardstock. And you're going to be using both the light and the dark colors. And I cut the strips and the four and a quarter by five and a half inch pieces to go um, on top of the cards. So that's an A2 card size, if you didn't know, which I never knew. And then I saw it's said A2 someplace and I thought okay that's the size and the other thing that you're going to use is colored pencils for doing the coloring so there's my color pencil set and I just picked out some colors uh, oranges and a red and a kind of a goldish color and a brown and a yellow um, to color that stamp set and so it kind of shows you where to make the die cuts, what to use for the die cuts. And uh, so I'm going to set my inks aside and pull out my handy dandy beautiful pink cuddle bug. And unfortunately, Cricut has stopped making the cuddle bug. And so uh, Close to My Heart has started carrying a. Um, new die cut uh, machine when it's not you know it's a hand crank machine it's not really a machine but a tool uh, for cutting your dies if you don't have a cuddle bug or any of the other die cut machines so um, anyway I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, not necessarily all of the pieces needed and I'm not gonna make all 15 cards because sort of like you know you don't need to see me make five cards of the same card. So uh, I'm just going to make one each of the three designs. And I'm going to cut out enough of the uh, die cuts to uh, embellish those cards. So here we go. I mean, this is how hard is this? And I usually go through at least twice and sometimes even more uh, to make sure that it's cutting all the way through and it did a beautiful job of cutting this and I just look at that thing and I think god what a headache that would be to have to cut that out by hand maybe I'm just lazy could be anyway I'm gonna just continue on down that strip of paper paper and uh, cut some more out so the new catalog has two card sets in it. And so this card set 
is really good for um, Thanksgiving cards or fall thank you cards or um, you know whatever this comes with three sentiments um, on the stamp set so you can use those or if you have uh, some other sent sentiments that you want to use instead then you could always always do that and so that little the smaller die cut is an acorn and the oval is a pine cone so and as it turns out these were very very easy to stamp they were not hard to line up at all and um, just worked out uh, very nicely so I'm doing uh, I don't know how I probably did five or six of of the die cuts and then you know at a later time in my on my own I will continue making the rest of those cards and I'm just trying to squish in as many as I can get on the um, piece of scrap so there we go and the one I got really close it kind of shuffled and I got it really close to the cutting line but I lucked out it was just a hair in between <laughs> those two cut pieces so you know I'll take luck over anything any day have to live my life on some luck anyway I like how these um, cards are they seem to me to be a little bit easier to do than uh, the card kits from the last uh, catalog and um, I kind of I kind of like that because you're making so many you don't want it to be so tedious that you know you end up saying gee this isn't very much fun and then you don't finish the cards so I like the fact that these were they were easy to cut and uh, they were very easy to put together so here I am showing you the I'm pulling the stamp off of our cling stamps which I don't think you can beat our stamps just saying with the detail and stuff that these stamps show uh, they're really good and you know I have yet uh, to get a stamp that's gotten so worn out that you can't stamp get a good stamp out of it anymore so I'm just giving it a test a test go on a piece of scrap paper that I had handy and uh, now I'm gonna use so you always want to use your little sponge backing so you get a very good impression you can really squish into that card stock and make sure that you're getting a very good impression I'm using the charcoal um, ink and then I will use the pencils to color it and then I'll use a blending pen and the charcoal ink did not run now this is not a permanent ink this is a water-based see how cute that comes out uh, this is a water-based ink and so I'm gonna do um, some of the others uh, for the other cards and the other card uh, you aren't going to color inside you're going to this is our new uh, little scrubby for the stamps and it works really well so you just want to keep it um, moist close by and put it on something that's not going to ruin paper and uh, it's great it really works out nice for cleaning the stamp now this is kind of called the rock and roll technique and so I stamped it in saffron the whole stamp was in saffron then you use the darker color um, around the edges and so like I said this stamp was particularly easy to line up with its die cut buddy and look at how that so you have the nice golds and the uh, dark oranges or you know reddish color uh, for the fall I, and it came out really good I was really happy with uh, and I like that they use the rock and roll technique because that is one of my favorite stamping techniques to use because it's effective and uh, fun to do and and not hard it's not hard 
yay. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I really like that. So now I'm going to use the, um, that's the pine cone. And that's so cute. And the pine cone is going to, I'll, I'll put a little dimensional uh, um, foam circle on that and pop those up from the uh, inside of the, the, I don't know, what do you call that? The group, fall grouping of leaves and berries and what have you. Anyway, and you can get more elaborate with the coloring if you if you want. So aren't those, those are just so cute, aren't they? Those little pine cones, gotta love those. Okay, so I'm gonna put my little pine cone away and then I'm gonna get my little acorn and the acorn gets done in paprika. And so it's a nice bright, but not neon. It, it's definitely fallish color. Orange, reddish orange. They are so cute. I could just sit here and make those little acorns and put them all over the cards. So very cute. And I put him away and then I'm gonna take the um, banners and uh, there's three sentiments with the stamp set. Thanks so much grateful for you and so blessed to have you so all nice perfect sentiments for cards so I think what I was thinking here is I was supposed to have cut out a paprika banner and so I thought well since I didn't cut that out maybe I'll just sponge the banner but it came out too splotchy really one side is too splotchy and the other side I tried to go a little bit lighter on. Anyway, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's okay. It's not necessarily great, but so I'll think about that one. We'll see how I feel towards the end when I'm putting the sentiments on. And so the other sentiment I'm going to, so I used grateful for you which I really, really not like. Um, so that might be the one I use for that particular card. But any of the sentiments, you know, that's, that's up to you. Now this particular strip gets, um, it's, it's paprika, but if you use the light side of the paprika and then you uh, stamp in paprika, regular paprika, then it, see, you can read it. So it's paprika on paprika, uh, but we're using the light side so the dark ink sticks out. So very cute. And then there's like a little accent line that um, I do in charcoal. But when you're, you know, the only thing you have to, or maybe I did it in paprika, I think I did it in paprika. The only thing you have to worry about when you're stamping is, you know, that's why it's nice to have that little chamois close by. Um, make sure that you look at your stamp before you put it on your cardstock, because there's a good chance that you've gotten some smudge of ink on the block, and then the smudge transfers to the, to your cardstock, and you don't want to you don't want to have any smudges if you can help it. I mean, it's okay to have a little bit, but you, you know, you want to keep it at a minimum with the smudges. So I'm just going to put the inks out of the way because I'm notorious for leaving them out and then I get ink all over my card. So the first one I'm going to do is the saffron background. And you'll see how simple this is. I mean, the cutting really didn't take me a long time. So I'm putting the Tombow on the light side um, 
of the cardstock and then a little piece of the zip strip goes at the bottom there and then um, you go you take the mink which I'm going to get right now the mink twine and you wrap it twice around the little block there give yourself some room to make a knot and that's all you have to do is make a knot and then cut the strips so they're the same length. Ta-da! Very simple. Okay, so that's going to go there and then Oh, am I going to color next? Is that what goes on there? Okay, so I'm going to pick out some colors to color. So the one is kind of a goldish and then an orange and a brown and a lighter yellow and I think later on I add a red so nice fall colors but the colors are up to you and if you notice I am scribbling away here I mean I am just really scribbling and I'm putting multi colors on uh, these look like oak leaves to me and add another touch of color and then at the end I'm gonna come which I don't have my blending pen with me of course I always have to forget something uh, so the blending pen will take all of those colors and they will all kind of smush together and become very even and very lovely and very mixed and so that's why I really like using these pencils because they can just take all your little scribbling that looks so messy and smooth everything out. Like, how did you get it so nice, so even? And you, I don't. It's the blending pen doing all the work. So, <laughs> oh dear. Nothing like, I'm not an art, artistic but I can still do this. That's, that's what's so cool. I mean, I wish I was an artist. There's all sorts of artists in my family, but that wasn't me, unfortunately. Um, so I have, to, I have to find other ways to, to make it look good. <laughs> anyway, this is, this is really fun for me, and um, I, do, I do like doing it, but I do have to kind of, you know, kind of take clues from from the stuff that the artist put put together for me and then I can go from there so if you're like that then this is great if you want to be more artistic then have at it because more power to you so here's my little blending pen and uh, there's different kinds of blending pens and uh, you know this is just I have a whole bunch of these things so um, you know they're just kind of they're not real watery they just let things out very evenly but it just see how the colors just kind of blended into each other and then it looked like it was pulling too much red up so I just wiped off the the um, tip to get rid of the excess red there but I mean how fun is that oh I love it I love it I really I yeah that looks really pretty right I mean that's just me copying the instructions ladies I'm not bragging on myself it's some bragging more on the the artists that have come up with the instructions to put this together so I am lifting the uh, back up because I've got that twine there that's going to um, kind of interfere with if I put Tombow on the back. So I'm lifting it up a little bit to kind of be in line with the, the uh, twine. And uh, it also, you know, just adds a touch of dimension to the card. And then I'm going to put the, um, my little bouquet of my fall bouquet on there and raise it up too. 
So, I mean, how fallish does that look? I really like it. Okay, so what am I going to put here? Who knows? Get rid of my trash. I always kind of work in chaos. I hope it just seems to be the way I work. I, I don't like it. I would rather work very neatly, but... No, everything, everything, if I'm around, it goes to chaos very quickly. So I'm making this a thank you card. So I'm putting thanks so much. And then I can send thank yous for during the fall season, which we're coming up to. Of course, you know, mind you, it's Texas and it is 100 outside. So I'm just waiting desperately for the fall to come. So there we go. And I'm just kind of scooching it under the twine and under the little bouquet. And there we go. Card one done. Okay, the next one is going to be using paprika for the background. And I'm going to put my Tombow on the... Uh, on the light side of the cardstock and give about a quarter of an inch all the way around eyeball it and then this goes there and then you just kind of cut off not that's not cutting is it that's ripping um, so just you know you're in the fall so you want a little um, I don't know rustic rustic for fall does that make sense kind of goes with it so first you put down the saffron background and texture piece and then you put down your charcoal uh, strip and then I'm taking my pine cones that I made my charcoal pine cones and I'm gonna put them over the saffron colored pine cones so you're bringing the charcoal gray forward um, into the into the bouquet and so um, this I'm going to continue to lift it up with some of my um, foam adhesive foam tape so the foam tape uh, is carried by close to my heart and it comes in quarter inch and I think three-eighths inch um, so see that one looks really nice too and this one grateful for you am I not gonna put that well now see if I use that one we're already rustic with the rip so having a sponged uh, sentiment kinda makes sense right so it's kind of too rustic two rustic pieces on there there we go and then I'm gonna also use the twine and I think uh, this is just a bow um, that is going to be put underneath the uh, fall bouquet and then I start struggling with my my liquid glue because it got the nozzle got clogged up somehow so it's not coming out so I have to work on that and figure out why why it's clogged up um, anyway that would be the best thing to use because that little bow would be going no place if I could get it to work if only no nope. try and try as much as I poke it just won't come out so I end up using Tombow just to show you what it looks like I'll work on that glue to make it work and so there's a little bow okay trash away two down one to go see these I mean really these cards I mean I know I've got it rushed I mean uh, zoomed up here but um, they really are easy to make and they're I think real cute real real attractive uh, for the fall so this uses a quarter strip of charcoal underneath the fall leaves 
there we go. And then uh, this is the paprika stri strip that has the paprika words on it. And then, um, so you use that those cute little acorns. So one is going to go in the center and then they have you stamping um, on, on the card, on the white part of the card. So if you were smart, then you would put the gray line down first, and then you could measure the, the um, acorns from up from the gray line. Now the, that acorn, the last acorn I did is a second generation paprika. So I filled the uh, stamp up with ink and stamped it on scrap and then stamped it again. So it's second generation. So the next thing is that little dashed line that is used on the sentiment strip. And so we're carrying the, the um, same element up to the top along with charcoal. So it just kind of brings the charcoal element from the bottom to the top. And so now this gets a bow going all around the card to the inside. So I just made a knot first um, to just stabilize the, the uh, twine. And then I make the little loops of the bow the size I want them. And then cut the little tail off. And so I just want the bow to be more towards the top. And so I'm just scooching it up. And there's the third card. So like I said, pretty, pretty easy to make. And here's my envelopes. And if you've watched me make cards before, then you know I always decorate my envelopes. So what I'm going to do, um, so at first I was thinking of doing the uh, charcoal, but then I decided to do the um, sapphire and uh, paprika rock and roll technique on the envelope. And there's still plenty of room for the address, but I always like to decorate my envelopes uh, to kind of go with the card on the inside. So um, why have a boring white envelope when you can have a cute little thing on the front of it? So I'm going to make one envelope per card that I made. Do my paprika tips for the rock and roll technique. And there we go. So put my inks away so I don't make a mess, which, you know, you've seen me do that. I've done it before, really I have. So here are my cards. There's my envelopes. And here's my cards to go with the envelopes. So there we go. There we are. Three cards ready to go. Thanks for watching. Bye now.